before we jump into this video, I just wanted to let you all know that this Madden 22 video today on run defense is sponsored by EA and the EA Game Changers program. Let's jump into it. What's good, everybody? And we're back. And today, we're going to be going over how to stop the run in Madden 22. We're going to be going over a lot of different things, from explaining run fits, at least how I understand them, to different concepts that you can use in your own defense to try to help you stop the run, all the way down to a setup that you can take into a game right now to try to help you stop the run game. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to do a lot of different things. We've got a lot of different things to go over. So let's just jump right into practice mode and start going over these concepts. All right, so we're in practice mode now. And throughout this video, we're going to be in the big nickel over G on defense. But a lot of the things that we're going to talk about from run fits to some of the different concepts, they're going to work in other defensive formations as well. I just like to use the big nickel over G and that's what the setup's going to be out of at the end of the video that I talked about before that I'm going to give you to help you to try to stop the run. And yeah, so we're going to be in the big nickel over G. We'll just start with that. And let's just start with our run fit. So we'll just start with a cover two and we're just going to come out an I form and uh, just I form close flex and we'll just call stretch. So when you're in a cover two, right, something like this. The run fits are going to be everyone's in a run fit except for your deep blues, right? So here and here. These are the players that aren't going to be in the run fit. The rest are going to play the run right away. So when we hike the ball, and then we'll go into the replay to explain this. Everyone other than the deep blues started pursuing the run right away. So let's just go to our instant replay here. So when we hike the ball, you see everyone that's up in the box and then the outside corners start pursuing the ball while the deep halves, their first steps are backwards, right? That's because they're not in the run fit. So that's the cover two run fit. Now let's go into cover three and we'll just go cover three sky. I'm not gonna go through every single play because it'll get monotonous, like to just go through every different coverage concept to go over the run. But I wanted to show you a couple of like the, the common ones. So like cover three sky, cover four and cover two. So we're just running the stretch again. And I will go into the replay. So you're going to see this outside corner now that was in the cloud before for the cover two that pursued right away is actually going to drop back. And the safety that's in the deep blue is dropping back as well. And you see this outside corner here also dropped back. So we have three players now that didn't pursue. Now I'm not really using another play, but we're in the run fit to our linebacker. So that's cover three sky. Now let's just look at cover four. And now you can go into any play that you want. So maybe if you have something that you have like as a base call, that you like to run anything from like cover six to cover nine to corner blitz three, like any of these things that you wanted to look at, feel free to go look at them and you can just hike the ball in a run play and then go into the replay and see who, who pursues the football right away. Right. And you can tell. So in a cover four, uh, the safeties are now both in run fits. So if you look here, both the safeties are going to play the run right away. You see one, two, right? They both start going to the ball. They don't drop back like they were doing before from the cover two. But uh, the outside corner here, that's on the right. Remember, they, they were in the run fit on the cover two. They drop back. And then the outside corner over here, they kind of pursued backside, it looked like. But they're not really, like, going too hard until they've already made a couple. Like, they've already ran for a few yards. So that's cover two, cover three, and cover four run fits. I just wanted to go over that. The last one I wanted to go over is cover two man. And that's actually what our run defense is gonna be out of at the end. So cover two man, but really any man in general from like cover one hole or uh, just any like cover one, cover two uh, man, anything like that. Anyone that's manned up to a player is going to be in the run fits. The two deep halves, again, similar to cover two are not going to be in the run fit. So you hike the ball here. The players that are in man are pursuing the football. Meanwhile, the deep halves are not. Now, I know that was pretty boring, right? We just went over a bunch of different run fits. What does it all mean? Now, that just kind of leads us into our next thing. I just wanted to break down how the run fits work, right? So let's get to our second part now. As you see here, the, the deep pass just drop back, right? Just like before. So now let's get to our second part here. Let's start going over some concepts that I think can you, that you can use to stop the run. So first and foremost, I just wanted to note if you're in the big nickel over G like I am in order to do this first concept that I'm talking about, you're going to have to do the slot CB package. So you see here, as I scroll through the packages, there's a lot of different packages that you can use in order to do the adjustments that I'm talking about. You need to be in the slot CB package. So I just want to start with that. Now let's go back to our cover two man that we were in. 
We'll go back to that same stretch play just to keep it keep it consistent. Now, we're, yeah, since we're still in this two-man under, the first concept is putting your deep blues in spies. So when you put a player in a spy, it automatically puts them into the run fit as far as how they play the run. So instead, like when before, when we were in the cover two man, those two deep halves ran straight back. And they didn't run straight back, they dropped straight back instead of pursuing the ball. Now when they're in spies, they're gonna actually just pursue the football. And again, we're just kind of breaking this down step by step. So now you have 11 people essentially pursuing the ball, right? Instead of the nine that you had before, if you include your user, you had nine, but when you have these uh, deep halves and spies, they both start pursuing the ball right away, right? So that's something that you can use to have extra people playing the ball initially so you don't give up as big of a gain, right? So that's the first concept, it's spying. The other thing I like to do, if I have four down D linemen, I really like to um, pinch my line and crash out. So I'm gonna press here. I like to press as well, just gives players on the line, allows them earlier chances at block sheds rather than having the block sheds be downfield. I like to pinch my line and I'll, I'll type out all the setup stuff on how to do it in the description so we don't have to bog it down here. But yeah, pinch and crash out. That's gonna help you against inside runs because you have a pinch line, but crashing out still helps you against those outside runs as well. So if you if you have your line spread, it gives a little bit more gaps, I feel like, down the middle. So pinching and crashing out is another concept. So when you add those two together, you have it looking like this, right? And when you hike the ball, you have that stretch. Now with this D-line setup, there's going to be ways that you can shoot the gap with your linebackers. Now it's not gonna be the same from every single play versus every single different formation, but I wanted to show you one. So we're in the same formation with this ISO here. And if you time it up right, you can shoot right down through the middle there and get a tackle on the backfield. Now, again, it's not gonna be foolproof. It's not gonna be automatic. It's not like, like in years past where you could easily shoot the gap for like a four yard loss. But if you time it up right, you're able to get into the backfield and we get a little shed there as well to get the tackle. But it's definitely something that you can do against different things. So I'll show you against like an inside zone as well. But I wanted to show you against this ISO. If you time it up right, say like there, we get picked up uh, because that left guard gets us. But sometimes you can you can get through as you saw before uh, before they are able to block you. You kind of have to just you have to run as soon as the play starts. I'm trying to hike the ball with one with one hand and then run with the other. As soon as they hike, you want to be running. You don't want to waste any time. So as soon as they're doing it, you're trying to run through. And there we go. We're able to do it again. So I'm trying to get from here to here uh, with my controller. But that's what you want to do as soon as they hike that ball. Right when they hike, you're running through the gap. And you're able to beat that left guard before they block you. And you're able to get a tackle on the backfield, right? So that's one way they can shoot the gap. Now I'll show against an inside zone, uh, like a shot out of shotgun, just to show it's definitely something that you can do. Now I wouldn't recommend doing the setup that we're going to talk about a little bit later uh, against the, uh, against an inside zone from shotgun because they have a very like they can definitely pass the ball. But I wanted to just show that this is something that you can do against it. So let's just go to like a tray. This is good inside zone. You're going to want to use the backside uh, linebacker like this. And when they run the ball, now you don't have to be in two man under, you can be in any uh, play from this. So I'll just audible here to like a uh, cover three or yeah, cover two, cover two works. We'll go cover two and we'll go cover three match. So if they hike the ball against that inside zone, you're on that backside linebacker, you're doing the same thing. As soon as they hike the ball, you're sprinting right through the line and you're trying to get it. So now I'll do it out of cover three match. And I'll shade down, shade up just so like it, it doesn't keep, the, like it's not based on the match concepts, it's based on you being in cover three and I didn't get through right there. That's possibly because when the linebacker moves, so if you want to move that linebacker back in, so as you saw there when I audible, the linebacker moved, just move them back in so that they have to take up a block as well. When you do that, you're able to get through, you're able to get a chance in the backfield. So that's shooting the gap. Now we're going to show different things to help you against the run. We're going to go back to under center. We'll jump out of this shotgun. Quickly here, I just had one more concept that I actually wanted to go over before we got to the full setup. So we're actually gonna be doing this out of the two man under still. And before I put the spies, I wanted to show you how this concept works. So we showed before when we were in the run fits, out of two man under, these deep zones don't initially run towards the ball. They start dropping back. Now the way that you can counter that is actually by clicking the right stick. So as soon as they hike the ball, I'm actually gonna click the right stick multiple times. Now you technically probably only have to press it two times because there's only two players out of the run fit. That's what clicking the right stick does. It sends players that aren't in the run fit at the football. But I'll usually press it three to four times just for comfortability because it maybe it doesn't register quite right away. I just, so I'll just keep pressing it as I'm pursuing the football. You can do both at the same time. So we're still in this stretch here 
And right when they hike, I start clicking the right stick. <laughs> Don't fall down like that. That's not something you want to do. So take two. We'll show it again here. You don't want to be falling down like that. So I'm not putting the spies yet. I'm leaving the deep zones. And I'll just show in the replay how this is working. So when they hike, you press it a few times. And they start pursuing the football. Now disregard my user just diving right there at the, at the tackle and just completely whiff, whiffing it. Disregard that. This is what it's about. So when I click the right stick, it actually sends the players at the ball. So you see here, you can see like they do take a step or two back, which is what the spies are for. But once they like once we click that right stick, it sends the player. And that's both of them being sent right there. So let me do it just one more time for you all to see. I'll do it as quickly as I can. Oh, not, not what we wanted to do. There we go. So we have the deep pass again. I'll click the right stick again to send them at the football. As soon as they hide, click, click, click. And it sends them as fast as they can at the ball. Now, they aren't reacting as quick as the spies were, right? But that's be, that's why we have the spies. So when you click the right stick, it'll send them. So they take like a step back. You saw this one. This is the first one that gets sent. Kind of goes right away. This one's still dropping back a little bit. Takes three or four steps. But once that next one registers, they go. Now, it's possible that it really only registered the one. But I just keep pressing it just for safety if it sends the next one. So... I actually don't technically know if that one just would have ran at its normal timing without the click the right stick or not. But that first safe safety, 100% ran on the click the right stick. So that's why when you combine it with the spy and you click the right stick, I feel like it just helps them to react even faster. Now, maybe that's just placebo, right? Maybe it's not. Maybe that's not actually the case. I don't know. But I like to click the right stick because I feel like it helps. Now, Here's the setup because we've already gone over the concepts. We have the run fits we went over. We went over the spies. We went over the pinch line and crash out. We went over the click and the right stick. Now it's time for the actual setup. So here's the setup for the run defense out of the big nickel over G. First, you're going to want to set your defensive coach adjustments for auto flip set to on. Then you're going to call cover two man. Then once you're into your play, Here's the setup. Now this will all be written and how to do it in the description so you don't have to memorize it. But we're going to press, we're going to pinch our line down, and we're going to crash our D-line out. Then we're going to grab each safety, put them in a spy, and we're going to move them like five yards down into the outside. So again, we're going to spy both and move them like five yards down and outside. Then you're going to shade over top. Now the reason that you shade over top is because if you if um since you we don't have any deep pass right so if they actually pass the ball they're going to have some deep passes potentially open now i only recommend doing this if you think they're definitely definitely running the ball you're playing someone that's like running the ball a ton you have to get them to a passing situation you're setting up to stop the run now if they happen to pass and you're shaded over top you should be okay and for safety you're, you're like if you see them hike the ball and they go into a pass you'll probably want to run back and try to guard deep just to make sure you don't give up any deep passes but Again, this is really mainly for stopping the run. Now, here's why we have the spies move down and outside. It's to give them a better angle against outside runs. Stretches, power rows, tosses, things like that. So we're in a stretch right now. And what it does is it gives them a little bit of outside leverage against that to, you know, keep it from getting to the outside against you. And then also, if they do happen to run inside, it can still fill gaps that way. Now, I'm gonna, I like to use the player that's opposite of where I think the stretch is going. So if I think the stretch is going to the right, I'll use her this linebacker. If I think the stretch is going to the left, I'll use her this linebacker. But if you happen to be wrong, it's okay. It should still work against stopping the run. Now, once they hike, we'll still do that click in the right stick concept that I went over to send those spies right away at the football. So you see there, the player actually takes up a block and makes the tackle. So I was going to say after the play, what you'll likely see is either these safeties will make the play on the ball actually making the tackle, or they'll take up a block that you can actually make the play, right? So what this effectively does from this defense is you have 11 players pursuing the ball and well, made a mistake there, my bad. So you have 11 players pursuing the ball and they have the quarterback handing the ball off and then they have a running back with the ball. So it's 11 on nine, essentially. So you have the advantage when you're able to put these players in spies and get everyone pursuing the ball. So we just run the stretch again. And again, you'll see them either make the play or take up a block. Now I whiffed there, but someone made the tackle from behind. Uh, but yeah, so that's what they're likely going to do. That's the, that's the point of it. I'll just do one more stretch to the right. And we'll just go over some different runs and show each time. You don't have to be exactly precise with where you're putting the safeties. I just say generally three to five yards outside and down. Click that right stick. 
and there you go we're able to keep it inside you're just stringing the ball out on an outside run right just stringing it to the outside waiting for yourself or the safeties to make a play now let's go to an inside run we'll go to the uh iso here just like a basically a dive right up the middle and what we do is we click the right stick and we try to blow up the run in the middle and then also the safeties are there so i'll just go i want to go to the replay here and show that as i get set back up but if you look in the replay here even though i move them outside they still come pursuing right down on that inside run there's really nowhere for them to cut inside the middle if they cut here to the left that looks open that safety probably is going to make that play on the left there if they try to cut right we have a bunch of players there now if they can get really really sticky they can maybe bounce this to the outside but at that point that's going to be on your user if they're able to, if they're able to pull that off that's likely it's, it's it's going to be on your user it's gonna be a great play but great play by them it's gonna be on your user so and if they run this iso again you have a bunch of players there you have your pinched line you have your linebackers and then you have the safeties pursuing the ball so i'll, I'll do the iso one more time then we'll do a different inside run and you can also shoot the gap uh in a way from this defense at times as well if you can find the right angle and uh so, like and i i talked about that earlier in the video gap shooting but it's going to be different based on the given play like it's not going to be the same every single play as your gap shooting so that's the inside run let's look at just another like a zone week here and shooting down the ball we take up a block that safety comes in and takes up a block as well we're able to make the play now i know the I, i'm not using the, the running back at all so it's not really like making any big time plays with the run but there's not really many places that you can go with that so like right there i decided to fill the middle gap that safety comes in and makes the play this defense can be really really effective against that so definitely something to look into uh, i'll go to a different formation just to show you that it can be effective against other things not just like a compressed set like that let's just go to i form tight all right so we're in the i form tight now and we're not going to change the setup whatsoever here we're still doing the exact same thing the only thing that's different is our outside corner is now over the outside wide receiver rather than compressed inside because it was compressed formation before we're still using this opposite linebacker of where the stretch is going and i'll flip the stretch on the next play just so we can show if we're still if we're on the wrong linebacker it'll still work you're still clicking that right stick when they hike and you're still pursuing around that line now uh again the safety is either going to usually make the play or take up that block so that you can make the play yourself if your user's not there it can potentially be a broken run but that's why your user has to be there right but since there's a safety going in there to make the play as well usually you're not going to get blocked so uh oops now i'll run the stretch the other way just to show you that if they do that you'll still be able to make the play so just play maker the run to the left here go we'll click that right stick we're going around the edge you're still able to make the play now you don't want to get too like over committed and allow them to get the inside run but usually that gap's going to be filled so you don't have to worry about that you have trailing defense from your linebacker and your safety so if they do happen to cut up middle here you'll likely have someone there making the play like if you're kind of just picking either middle gap right here to the right or cutting outside to the left but regardless of which way they go you should be able to have a player there to make the play and i'll do that one more time so this concept i mean it's not 100 percent foolproof i'm not saying you're going to stop every single run ever i'm just saying like this is a pretty effective way to do so and there we go i mean there's a play where they would have probably gotten 10 to 12 yards to the left there but that's that other safety coming in from the right to make the play that's why you have both players uh in spies so that you can make the play if you miss so like you're not going to be perfect probably every single time but if they're able to get through that gap there like if they were user running they probably don't get tackled by the person getting blocked but there's a safety and a trailing linebacker there to make this play so let's say that they don't get tackled right here by the player that's on the block if they get through that gap our safety and our linebacker are there right so they're there to make the play last one here i'll show i just wanted to kind of break down this and show it against different things just to show you that it could be effective um but yeah i mean hopefully you all can mix this in if you're playing someone that's running the ball a lot you should be able to contain the run at least some uh, and try to force passing situations it's not something i'd recommend doing on a passing situation like a third and eight or anything like that but on a first and ten a second and one so and just playing someone that's running the ball a lot this is the setup that you can go to and it's definitely something that i think you could help you out so hopefully it did i hope you all enjoyed the video hopefully you all can be able to mix this in if you did enjoy the video please remember to like 
comment, subscribe. Only if you want to. I love you all. Take it easy. Peace.